Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, CCUC. Uh, also, welcome if you're joining us today on the live stream. And another welcome to you if you're new today. Um, so I guess uh, just before we get started and before we jump into worship, um, one of the songs we're singing is called uh, Christ Be Magnified. And um, as I guess I was just thinking about this song, kind of like chewing it over and like what it meant, um, I was kind of just thinking about this question, like what does it mean for Christ to be magnified in our lives? Because when we think about like the term like magnification, right? Or, like a magnifying glass. Uh, in that song, we're kind of asking <laughs> like God to, like when people look at us, we want them to see something, right? We wanna see Christ magnified in our lives, right? But how do people see that? Right? How do people experience that? And so I wanted to ask this question uh, for yourself. What does it mean to magnify Christ? Uh, in your life, what are the things that maybe need to start changing? What are the ways God is calling you to, to live or obey? Um, what is he calling you to do, to read, to pray? So I just wanted to ask that question, to give you all a moment to ponder that, to think about that, to chew that over, um, to pray, uh, to begin experiencing the Lord right now in this place. Um, and then in a moment, I'll pray for us and we'll get started. So let's take some time to just to think and pray. God, when people look at me, what do they see? When people are around me, what do they experience? Because God, if it's not the love and grace that you've showed me being poured out, there's something wrong. God, your love for us is so amazing that you would see all of us the innermost parts, the things that we try to hide. And God, that you would still love us, that you would still wanna save us. And God, for us to know these things, to have accepted uh, your salvation, to believe in you, and not go out and be living the life that you've called us to live, to not go out to serve and be your hands and feet, to be magnifying all that you're about, that the wonderful God that you are and everything that we do, God. It's not right. God, because all of our lives belong to you. God, everything we have is from you. And so God, as we, as we worship you today, help us remember the price that you paid on the cross for us. God, help us to respond. Help us remember that and respond in, in joyful worship. But God, we don't want you know, just, just these words to be empty uh, for some of the things that we're gonna be saying today that you know, like we won't follow idols, we'll stand firm and worship you. Um, God, that those things would be true in our hearts. God, that we'd yearn to live for you. That we'd be unafraid, we'd be bold to do what you've called us to do. So God, again, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness your patience with us. But Lord, just, just help us to see you a little bit more clear today. Open our eyes, unlock our ears. And God, just open our mouths so that we can praise you for who you are and what you've done. We thank you and in your name we pray, amen. Let's all rise together, let's sing, let's worship God. Let's 
Let me just pray for us. Lord, God, that's our prayer that you'd be magnified. God, that we would be willing to take the actions, do the things that you're calling us to do. God, to obey, to listen, to follow through, Lord. So now as we go into this time where um, we're going to get to hear from a variety of speakers, God, that, Lord, you would just get rid of anything that's getting in the way of us hearing you today. God, that you get rid of anything that's stopping us, stopping our lives from being transformed today. God, help us to just look to you, to focus on you, to give you our full attention right now in this place. We thank you, we love you, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. Good morning, everyone. Happy 4th. And before I begin, hey, just a word of thanks. Uh, I was texting with Pastor James Bull Ford this past week, and he just wanted to express his gratitude and thanks to the entire CCUC family. It was his first time ever preaching in Chinatown, and so a lot of times the graciousness that you showed him and for him is just, he got a chance to understand and learn a little bit about the Chinatown community and meet all of you guys. So he looks forward to being with you all again, and so thank you. And for those who have been with me for the last three months, we've been working on this theme of the triple listening skill. So a lot of times I've been talking about the last three months, beginning in April, about what it means to look at what we call this triple listening skill. We looked in first, in the first month back in April, we talked about this whole idea of listening to God. And so the whole idea was this. Here, let me just begin here. Our first idea was this. Our first big idea is learning to stop is when we begin to start. When we learn to stop and hear what God is calling us to do, when we learn to stop and we learn to listen and hear God's presence is when we begin to start. We talked about the idea of listening to God when he confronts sin in our lives because all of us have heart issues. All of us have heart matters that we're dealing with. We're listening to God when he calls us to action. He has a unique plan for all of us, and he calls you and I to a specific action, a unique plan that he has designed for your life. But we listen to God when he comforts us. During times of struggle, during times of uh, trials, and uh, all of those things, God is with us. And what does it mean to listen to God when he comforts us? Last month, we talked about this whole idea of listening to your heart. And our big idea was that, what is inside of you will eventually come out. That what is inside of you, good or bad, some some of the anger or guilt or jealousy or greed that you struggle with, that if left unattended, and sometimes we don't want to deal with it, we hope the problem goes away, if left attended, eventually what is inside of you will eventually come out. And we talked about the whole idea of the shadow self. All of us have a shadow self. Because we have a perception that we give to other people. All of us who are sitting here in this room have a public persona. We want people to see us in a different way. We appear in a way that you want me to see. And a lot of times we don't allow people in. But all of us have a shadow self, a unique, an authentic perspective. Our shadow that shows where we truly are. And how do you deal with that shadow self? How do you come to grips? Is your shadow self similar to your public persona? But then we also deal with biases, don't we? All of us deal with biases. We have biases toward people who don't look like me. A lot of times with the male and female discussion, men and how you view women. We have biases toward people who don't sound like me. We have biases toward people who don't act like me. Within Christianity, a lot of times we struggle with people with a different sexual orientation than what we deal with. And mostly something that has divided the church, we deal with, we struggle, we have biases toward people who don't vote like me. In churches, one of the biggest things that we deal with in the area of voting is we have allowed the elephant and the donkey to become our symbols. And we have lost sight of the lamb as our symbol. And we have allowed politics in many churches to divide us. And so today we actually work on our final theme that I want to talk about today. 
is this whole idea of listening to your community. The community that God has placed you in, the community, whether it's in your workplace or the city that you live in, the church that you live in, and our big idea is this, that the world is able to see God's presence through your presence. The world is able to see God's presence through your presence. That God calls us to be of salt and light in the kingdom, that we are called to bring the kingdom of God, the city on the hill, What does that mean for us as Christ followers? That when they see us in the midst of our work, our family, our community, are we truly making a difference? That as Christ followers, we are listening to God. We understand the message of grace in our lives. We know that we are saved by grace. But because of that grace, we do good works. That's what Ephesians 2 tells us. But yet at the same time, we are listening to God within our hearts as God works to prepare an altar that glorifies him and we deal with some of the heart issues in our life. But now, how do we listen to our community? How do we make a difference in our community? How do we continue to allow the world to see God's presence through our presence? And so this morning, we're gonna do things a little bit differently instead of the usual sermon is I, we're actually, many of you guys are familiar with TED Talks. So today we're going to do three small sermons, three eight-minute sermons, looking at a series of different passages. I'm going to spend some time looking at Acts chapter 1 for the next eight minutes. From that point on, I'm going to turn it over to my former professor, my former teacher, and now my colleague at Resource Global, Dr. John Feuder, is now going to dive into Acts chapter 17 for eight minutes to talk about Paul's interaction in Athens. Then he's going to hand it over to Chris, who's going to spend the final eight minutes talking about Acts chapter 5 and the work of the apostles. So you're going to get eight, three different eight-minute sermons, and I'll come back and wrap up the entire thing. So for me, my passage is based on this, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it tells us, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And what? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. What does that mean? Let's break it down. First part is this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. What is that power? What do we think about when we hear the word power? Do we think about this when we see power? Or do we think about this when we see power? What is that idea of power that God gives us? What is that feeling or that thought on power? I love this word, uh, this is, give me one minute, or this, in the air power. Many of you guys have been watching the whole idea of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you see this as power. Frederick, a German philosopher who shaped most of our understanding of modern intellectual history, says this about power. That my idea of power is that every specific body strives to become master overall space, and extend its force, its will to power, and to thrust back all that resists its extension. That's our understanding of power in modern day history. We see examples of this everywhere we go. We see that in the, in the corporate space. A lot of times we all want to be that CEO, don't we? We all want that corner office. We all want that perks. We all want subordinates or employees that we could quote unquote boss around. We want that power. We saw, see that in our dominance and certain how men, certain, certain men view women. Racist, ethnicity, we see that in world power. We see, we're seeing that in Russia and how they're dealing with Ukraine. We see that in the Persian Gulf War. We saw that in World War II. All of it is the display of power built upon that, that we are to become master over all space and to extend its force. Is that power that the Holy Spirit gives us? Jesus, is that what you're talking about when you're talking about power? Or is it something different? My friend Annie Crouch tells this 
about power. And he says power is a gift. It's the gift of a giver that is the supreme model of power used to bless and serve. Power is not given to benefit those who hold it. It is rather given for the flourishing of individuals, peoples, and the cosmos itself. Power is right, especially important for the flourishing of the vulnerable. Power is not the opposite of servanthood. Rather, servanthood is the very purpose of power. Power redeemed can foster life and flourishing if we remember its true end as God intended it. To create room for more being, motivated by love, overflowing. The key word, the phrase here is servanthood is the very purpose of power. What does it mean for us to extend our power, the power that the Holy Spirit gives us, the power that you and I have in our wealth, the power that you and I have in our position that we have, the power you and I have based upon the circumstance that he has given us, the position that he has given us. How are you stewarding that power well? How are we using it for servanthood to continue to care for people, to continue to bless people as God has intended it? Are you using that power well? Are you understanding what that power is? The power that you wield. And are you using that power? Whether you're a pharmacist or a pastor or a teacher or a nonprofit leader, an engineer, an entrepreneur, a student. Are you using that power well? A housewife, a mom, all of that. Are we using that power well? But you will receive power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be what? You will be my witnesses. It's not going to be you are my instrument. It doesn't say that. Well, you're, you're going to be my testimony. It doesn't say that. You're going to be my, the person that I'm going to use to serve. You're, it doesn't say that. You, but what does it say? You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to be my witnesses to testify how God has given you power and you've used that power to bring good, to bring human flourishing all around. That's what you're going to be a witness of. Sometimes it's so good to look at a word and do a quick word study on it. And a lot of times I don't like to sit there and say, well, here's the original Greek word because it just doesn't make any sense. But in this case, I do want to show you if you guys know that the original, the New Testament was written in originally Greek, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. And the original word for witnesses is what? Martyrs. Where the word martyrs come in. You are a witness till death of what God is doing through you and how God has given you power and you are a witness of what God is doing through your life and the lives of other people. You're a witness of that, even to the point of death. And where do we do? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. For the disciples, when they left, when Jesus left them, it started in Jerusalem. From that point, I went to all of Israel. Then eventually, as we saw with Paul and all the apostles, it went to the rest of the world. And for us, our Jerusalem is our own internal network, our community, our family, our friends, our work, our church. You are a witness to them in your family. You are a witness to them, to your kids, to your wife, to your work, to your husband, to your family and your friends. But we have a job, we have a calling to take it to all of Judea. And as Doc will share a little bit to our city, our community, because we live in this community of Chinatown. We live in the city of China, in Chicago. How does our presence, how does our work, how does our career, how does our talents shape and influence the community and city that we live in? But it goes to Samaria, ethnicity, that God bridges all ethnicity. That Christianity is not a religion for Chinese or Asians. It's not a religion for whites. It's not a religion for just Africans or Latinos, but it's a religion for all of us. That all of us stand equal around the world, no matter who we are. That God, the gospel continues to bridge all ethnicity. But we have what we are called to do, to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. That all of us are called for global missions. It doesn't mean that we go out there, but a lot of times it does mean that we are aware of what God is doing globally and what our role is. 
and how we address some of the injustices or some of the problems in this world. And as I go to that final slide, and I'm going to turn it over to Doc, who's going to spend some time talking with us about what it means to exegete and listen to the community. I want to show you one thing. I wish I could have blown it up a little bit more. My, uh, one of the guys who I respect dearly is this guy by the name of Tim Keller over in New York City. Tim talks about this whole idea of the gospel ecosystem. No one city, no one entity, no one individual can do it alone. That within the city, a pastor has to work with other pastors. A church has to work with other churches. Churches have to work with other nonprofits. Churches have to work with teachers and schools and nurses. We're going to have to work with marketplace leaders. We're going to have to train all of these things. When all of us come together based upon what God has called us, because no one position is better than the rest. No one ethnicity is better than the rest. The pastor's role is not a higher calling than marketplace leaders. It's not a higher calling than ministry leaders. When all of us know our role, and we engage in the problems of a city, we create a gospel ecosystem. And that's when the gospel begins to thrive. That's when we begin to address the problems with the city. That's when God begins to extend his presence and people see the presence in the city. But how do we do that? We have to listen to the city. We have to love the city. We have to be students of the city. And with that, I'm going to jump in and transition to my dear friend and my former professor, Doc Feuder. You know, I love it when your former Moody students far exceed you, right? Man, Tommy, that was good. I wanted to take notes on that, but I thought I'd fall off my stool. Well, guys, thanks. And for eight minutes, Chris, I'm going to put my little timer on here. I promise I will save you some minutes. How's that, bro? So he doesn't have to just say the benediction, right? So guys, we're gonna go now to, here's what we're doing. So Tommy had all these slides, I've got one, how's that? So look in Acts 17, would you, with me, please? And if you wanna go on your Bible or on your phone. And uh, so let's think about this, this idea of exegeting, that's kind of a big, scary word. Think of, think of it as engaging the community, or listening to, or learning from. That's what we're doing. Four principles here. A heart that is stirred, we're gonna watch and learn. Paul is our example. He's invited to speak, and ultimately, he applies or unpacks the gospel. So that's where we're going. Now, the very first point, a heart stirred, I want you to see this in verse 16. Acts 17, verse 16. I'm in the New American Standard, by the way. I'm going to hop and skip around on some of these scriptures here. Paul, in the city of Athens, so this is big time, y'all. This is, this is world-class stuff, just like our city of Chicago. Notice this phrase. His spirit was provoked within him. Now, I want to pause on that word, provoked think of the think of it as stirred think, think of it as as deep uh, e emotion but more than that let's go with righteous anger okay uh, emphasis on the former not the latter paul was deeply moved that the city of athens and its people there had very little understanding of who jesus was obviously that's the fourth point but notice how we get to that okay now, think about this. Let's think of the word compassion, okay? There was a book written many years ago by a man with the Lord now, Dr. Henry Nowen. The book's called Compassion. So I want you to think of this definition of the word compassion when you think of heart stirred. These are Nowen's words. The word compassion means to suffer with. It asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into places of pain, to share in brokenness, fear, confusion. Here's a word, anguish. It challenges us to cry, to be weak, to be vulnerable, to be powerless. Tommy just talked about receiving power by the Holy Spirit. Compassion means full immersion in the needs around us. May I ask you this, folks? Um, take a heart check this morning in these few minutes together. Do you long for this kind of a lifestyle? Some of the stuff I just read, right? It's kind of overwhelming, but... Could we dare to say, God, break my heart for what breaks yours here in Chinatown, here in our broader city of Chicago? Where do we see this? Well, Christ modeled this, right? Mark 6, Matthew 9, Jesus, seeing the multitudes, felt compassion, and what? And began to teach them, responded. This idea of your heart being stirred is actionable. 
It's not just a feeling. It's not a pity. It's like, oh, bummer, that's really too bad that folks in our community are struggling. No, it's a, it's a willing. I was going to roll up my sleeves, but they're shirt already. <laughs> it's a willingness to roll up our sleeves and say, God, here am I, use me. God always starts with us before we start to move into deeper principles of engaging the community. He starts with our heart, and it translates down to our hands and to our feet. Now, the second phrase in verse 16 Starting a, a parade of verses all the way through verse 23, I want you to see this. Paul's spirit was provoked, it was stirred, as he was what? Beholding a city full of idols. There's our word. There's an engagement word. Now, if, like me, turn the page, verse 22, here's another phrase. Men of Athens, I observe that you're religious in all respect. Verse 23, as I was passing through your city of Athens, here's another word, and examining the objects of the worship. So, beholding first glance, an initial glimpse. Man, what's going on? There's so much idolatry in this place, okay? He goes a little bit deeper. The second phrase, observing. He's, he's now trying to think through the how a little bit. This idea of inspecting, going a little deeper. And then the third word in verse 23, examining, is, is now a sense of analysis and how. And these principles of observing, of inspecting, of analyzing. Paul carries this all the way through his ministry, really, but where else do we see it? Well, remember Nehemiah, right? When Jerusalem was a mess and the people, the remnant, were struggling in chapter 2 of Nehemiah. Remember, he's out inspecting the land. The same word is used when Moses sends out the spies in uh, Numbers chapter 14. These principles of community analysis, if, if, if you will, of exegesis or engaging the community are modeled well. And so you see Paul, you know, here he is in verse 16. Uh, he moves now into verse 70. He's starting to reason. Notice this, in the synagogue and the marketplace, that's key, guys. It's both and. In the building and on the street, so to speak. And philosophers are starting to make sense. Look at this, before we get to point three, the phrase in verse 18. What would this idle babbler have to say? The word play in the Greek, it literally means seed picker. We would say bird brain, bird brain. And, and it's like, this guy's pathetic. What could he possibly have to say to us philosophers? And then finally they bring him to the Oropagus, which is Mars Hill, and that the history of that is a god of war. And so Paul is given the, the, the prime platform, if you will, to engage the community. It's very key that you think about this invited to speak, y'all. Because often we rush in with a bully pulpit, right? The problem with the world today, the Bible said, you know, and it does say all that, and there are needs around us. But think of this idea of earning the right to speak. Think of this idea of having skin in the game. Think of this idea of listening to and learning from and beginning to inspect and analyze and process. And we would certainly say pray into all that as well because that is the model of what we see so profoundly because Paul is beginning initially to engage, but then the beauty of this is people sense this guy has something to say, right? And so when you are invited to speak, men and women, God help us to have something to say, right? Where does that start? On your knees, in prayer, in church, in your own time, in scripture together, and then finally the gospel is applied. Paul marvelously unpacks the good news in context. And look how he begins. He goes, guys, verse 22, man, I see that you guys are religious in all respect. Does he start with critique as a hater? No. He's like, y'all are amazing. You are so hungry and searching for a relationship with God. And he goes, I've got some great news to you because as I was passing through, examining your objects of worship, he's like, even, you even have an altar to an unknown God. You guys are so persistent in your seeking you don't want to miss anything. And by the way, an idol, I meant to say this earlier, is anything that takes your affection from God. Anything that takes your affection from God. So a sermon for another time is what does an allegiance to idols look like even in our own lives, right? So then Paul continues and he goes, guys, I'm here to tell you that the God who made heaven and earth, he made you and I, he made us, verse 26, look at this, one blood from every tribe, tongue, and nation. It, it, it is not ultimately about an allegiance to uh, stone, silver, idol, ultimately, but it's in him that we live, move, and exist. He has overlooked your ignorance, you're groping, you're grasping, and he now wants you to know that repentance is available to all. And look at the result here. 
Some sneered at him. Some made fun of him. Some said, man, we need to hear this guy. And ultimately, some even chose to follow and believe. And so principles of engaging the community, let your heart be broken by the things that break the heart of God. Watch, learn, listen, observe, inspect, analyze what's going on, even within our community here in Chinatown. As people notice and begin to ask you to engage, then go forward with the good news of the gospel placed beautifully in the context of those around. Amen. I think I took about 30 seconds of Chris's minutes, so I need to be done. Chris, have at us, brother. Thanks. Uh, good morning. If you guys can open to Acts chapter 5 with me. just want to preach from here. And we're looking at verse 12. We're going to read. Uh, let me read through it now. Okay. It says, Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Now, I've been really blessed by what, um, you know, Tommy and uh, Doc Buter have been speaking uh, this past eight minutes, and Tommy for the past couple months. Um, and one of the things I want to highlight from what Tommy said earlier is that our presence, through our presence, uh, the people in our community see God's presence. It's a powerful thing, and we see that here in Acts 12, uh, Acts 5, verse 12. We see that the Christians of that time were out in the community. People saw that. And one thing that I want to highlight is that they were making the kingdom famous. People in that town and surrounding towns knew that if they had sick, if they had people who were possessed, if they had problems, who should they go to? They went to the church. They were looking to the church. Their question was, what is that church up to now? We've got this need, this need, and this need. What is that church up to now? For all of you who are sitting here, that is our call. That is our call to, to answer that question. What are we up to? What is the spirit up to in your life as an individual? What is the spirit up to in our communal life as a church? And I want to say to you, in these past couple of years, CCUC, you have made the kingdom famous. You have made the kingdom famous. Whether you know it or not, you've made the kingdom famous. Okay? So uh, we have been doing work in the community. We've been uh, feeding those who do not have food. We've also stepped in uh, for those who have safety needs, and safety a primary concern. You all are aware of um, a murder that happened just over the weekend. And a lot of us are still reeling because we have church family that have a parent that was murdered uh, in December of 2021. So there are a lot of needs, and in the past couple years, CCUC has been at the heart of addressing a lot of these needs. We are doing what we are called to do, uh, and I'm really excited to announce to you that we're going to be continuing that in an even greater scale. That's not stopping. Uh, that's not even taking a pause. In 2023, uh, we have plans to, to move that uh, at an even higher rate, uh, higher pace, as we address the needs of the community as an entire church. Now, uh, they've, they've been speaking to you about you know, the, the theological context of why we should be out in, in the community, why we should be present. Uh, I want to speak to you today about how we can be equipped because we are going to be out there. Every single one of us will be connected to the needs in the community in this coming year. And, and there are some important lessons that we need to learn because we need to be anchored as we go out and do this work. Okay? So, sure, we're making the kingdom famous. Um, our, our name, CCUC, has been in every major Chicago news outlet. We've been in the Trib, we've been in the Sun-Times, uh, we've been on WTTW. Our very own David Wu won the Mayoral Medal of Honor. Are you guys aware of that? Yeah, we can, we can clap it up for that. Hard work done over many years um, at Poitok. We are making the kingdom famous. Here's how we can be rooted, though, because it can be easy to look at the effects 
um, of, of what these apostles were doing and the Christians were doing, and it can also be easy to get lost in the things that we're doing. We need to remember why. So let's turn back to Acts chapter 4, verse 29. I'm going to read through 29 to uh, 31. And now, uh, yeah. Uh, and now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand and to heal. And signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So this is after the apostles were taken before uh, leaders and told not to speak, not to teach. And their prayer here was for themselves and for the church. How do we, move, how do we continue to move forward? Really key here for us is that the word needs to be our foundation. God's word needs to be our foundation. We see that they want to speak in 29, you can see, and now, Lord, look upon the threats and grant your servants and continue to speak your word with all boldness. When we go out and we do good, I want to let you know that we are not the only ones doing good. We are not. There are a lot of groups, community groups, here in Chinatown that have been doing good for decades. Uh, and we have as well, but when we continue to go out, we're not going to be alone. What sets us apart? The one thing that sets us apart is Jesus Christ. And the way that we stay set apart is that we stay rooted on God's word. Okay, so that's one. Second, I'd love to just highlight the sick healer connection. Um, I'll continue into 30. Uh, He says, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. So we need to continue to speak God's word. We need to share about who he is. And we need to understand that here, if you look at the phrasing, it's you, you, God, that are stretching out your hand in healing. Okay? What that requires from us is a, uh, like a position or a posture of humility. When we've gone out this past year, we've made the church famous, we've made God famous, but there's, there are ways that we ourselves can become famous. Uh, and I can just share with you, when we went out to go do security cameras, we were installing security, security cameras for our community, People were asking us about us. They were surprised. They were saying, you know, who, who are you guys? You guys are all young people. You guys are out here on like a Tuesday night. What are you doing out here? And it's so good when we tell them, yeah, we've got jobs. We're from the church, um, but we're just out here to help you. Immediately, their mind can go to, you are so good. When we go out in this year and in the coming years, that can be a temptation to accept that. Yes, I am great. Look at me. Put your eyes on me. And we need to make sure that we absolutely stay rooted in our humility in understanding that we are going out as an extension and God is the one that is reaching out and bringing healing. God is the one who is restoring. God is the one who is bringing peace. And then finally, just want to talk about the power of prayer. Uh, If you look at 31, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. What we're up against, uh, the problems of this world, they're spiritual. They are spiritual. And a security camera can make somebody feel more safe, but it does not address the spiritual condition that is creating their lack of safety. As we continue to move out and address the lack of peace, as we continue to go out and make the kingdom famous, we stay rooted on the word, we make sure we're humbled and We're connecting the sick in our community to the healer, not to ourselves. We absolutely need to make sure that we are on our knees and we are fighting this battle in prayer, individually, corporately, um, lifting up the needs of the community to our God. And so I'll just turn this back to Tommy as he closes. Chris, thank you very much. Doc Feuder, thank you very much. The whole idea I hope that all of you guys have heard is that we are listening and that we are honoring the community. The big idea is the world is able to see God's presence through your presence. Too often, I think a lot of times as Americans, we come in with answers. We think that we look at the problem, we assess the problem. That's how we've always been trained with school. But at the same time, it is so, so key, whether it's in this community or whatever community that you are, if you're visiting, this applies to you as well too. One of the things I've always been taught is listen 
and see what God is doing in the community that you're living in. Because God's grace has a plan for the community even before you were born. He's already foresaw that. My role and your role isn't to come up with the answers. Our role is to listen, be a student of the community, honor the community and the people in the community, and really be able to say, Lord, what is, are you doing? And how can I be part of it? Chris shared with you a little bit about Chinatown. Let me share with you about some of the other cities that I've engaged with and some of the things that are happening around the world. You have Washington Heights. I remember, Doc, uh, Doc, you and I remember, we went to Washington Heights. We got called by a church. And we had to go visit Washington Heights. It's an area that is very similar to some of the worst neighborhoods here in Chicago. So Doc and I showed up, and suddenly we see this Target truck. And we're saying, what in the world is this Target truck? No, not Target truck. Hinkley and Schmidt water. And so they're bringing all this water in there. And we walk in, and there's Target bags full of snacks. And as we got to know this ministry, this ministry had 25 students that they were doing tutoring for. Pretty good. What was their budget? $750,000 a year. And Doc and I are saying, what in the world are you people doing for seven fifty dollars a year? And in the midst of that, our conversation with them was, have you talked with the schools? Nope. Have you talked and met with the principals? Nope. So how did you know this was what they need? They were passing out gifts and everything. And he said, God placed it in our hearts to be doing all these things. So every single year, we pass out gift, Christmas gifts. We give out school supplies. We, we have a Thanksgiving where we give everyone the turkey. Is this what the community needs? No, but this is what God has placed in our hearts. So in some sense, you have to listen to the community as well, too. You have to honor the community. We talked a little bit about Kibera. Doc and I went to Kibera. It's a slum over in Nairobi. Nairobi is a Silicon Valley of, Kenya, of Africa. But Kibera is one of their slums. And when Doc and I walked in there, you know what the folks over in Kibera said to us? Don't feel sorry for us. When you come in, honor what we're trying to do. Don't try to solve our problems. Don't feel sorry for us because you think we're poor. Learn our community and understand how you can be part of this community. Doc and I and uh, all of us have, I've been to Jakarta many times over the last eight years. Jakarta is a city of 12 million people. Indonesia is 17,000 islands. The Chinese Indonesians make up 20% of the population, but 80% of the economy. The whole city is built upon what? Shopping malls. That's what the whole city is built upon. And so a lot of times the Chinese Indonesians have grown up believing God has blessed us. The darker skinned Indonesians, God didn't bless them. That's why they're there. And why in the world am I, being, am I helping them if God didn't bless us? Well, that's a bad theology. Well, then you got to address some of that theology. And last one, even in terms of Austin, Texas. Last one, Austin, Texas. Did you know Austin, Texas is the biggest growth city in all of the United States? Entrepreneurs from the West Coast, East Coast, the Midwest are all going to Austin. Tesla has moved over to Austin. How do you work and engage a city in which that city is growing astronomically? All of that is for us to be students of the city, to engage in the city. And now you're asking, so what? Who in the world cares? Here's what the so what is. Here's how people, uh, and I say this, with the, this is how people perceive church. These days, when we perceive the church, we sit here on Sundays and we listen to a sermon. But when you walk out of this church, if you ask people what they think, and not only just people in the U.S., but different people all over the world, they tell me this. The church is full of Christians and pastors who were embroiled in scandals. The church is filled with hypocrites. The church is not open to other people. In fact, we judge other people based upon what they believe in and how they practice their life. The church, especially in the U.S. in the last couple of years, are caught up in politics, and that continues to divide us. Side note, when the church takes sides in the polit political discussion, the church does get sidetracked. That's how people believe and look at the church. I love what Russell Moore says. He says this, 
we now see young evangelicals walking away from evangelicalism, not because they believe, do not believe what the church teaches, but because they believe the church itself does not believe what the church teaches. That's truth. That's what people believe in. We're seeing that in stats. Church's attendance is decreasing. People don't want to go back. Why do I want to sit here amongst hypocritical hypocrites and sit there and listen to someone who is out there preaching about sacrifice to all next thing you know being on a Hillsong documentary and being in the news as someone who manipulated millions from their congregation? I sure don't. And so the one thing I would say is don't lose hope. Continue to be a salt and light. And I say this to the young people, for some of you guys who are sitting there discouraged. Some of us uh, who are older, I'm 45 years old, I grew up in a different church. You're growing up in a different church. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Continue to fight. Continue to understand the grace that God has given you. Continue to understand the message of the gospel. And continue to be a salt and light, no matter what you see. I sat there with the former pastor, he sat in my office during lunch hour, and he says to me, Tommy, how do you still have hope? Because I lost hope a while ago. This is not going to change. And I said to him, you're going to have, we have to have hope. We're going to have to be like Zacchaeus, if you guys are familiar with the Zacchaeus, who climbed up a tree and was ridiculed by everyone who pointed at him, who talked about him because he was a tax collector, who made fun of him, and he had to look beyond all that criticism. And what did he see? He see Jesus in the midst of all that. He see Jesus far away. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. We have to keep hope. We have to display hope because the world needs us to continue to show and display hope. And for us as Christ followers to become Christians in all that we do, to live with that integrity, to live with humility, to do what Doc and Chris are telling us, to continue to engage the community and bring hope. We're going to lose sight of all that if we don't keep our eyes on Jesus. And so let me just actually end with one thing. That's why a lot of times in a couple of weeks, we're actually going to do a faith and work series because all of us as marketplace leaders, some of, most of us are not called to engage in the full-time realm in the church. We're, we're not called to work vocationally in church. We're called to be teachers. We're called to be nurses. We're called to be in, uh, uh, grandparents. We're called to be moms. We're called to be dads. We're called to be office professionals. We're called to be working in nonprofits. We're called to engage the city. And that's why a lot of times we're going to hear from my good friend Bob Dahl, who was very successful in Wall Street. He's going to share with us what it means to integrate your faith, the biblical foundations of integration of faith. We're going to hear from Kenson Lamb, who grew up in this church, but now is called to be a pastor, working with marketplace leaders. But we're going to hear from my friend Jillian Anderson, who works at Gallup, and how as someone who works at Gallup, working for Southwest Airlines, how she teaches how God uses our strength to make a difference. But then we're going to hear from Shundran Thomas, a very, very successful executive who is also a part-time pastor, president, former president of Northern Trust Asset Management. And then my favorite, Chris Broussard, an NBA insider who worked for ESPN and now Fox. He's going to talk about how he integrates his faith in, in the NBA and what God is calling him to do. In everything that we do, God calls us to listen to our community and to allow the world to be able to see God's presence through your presence. We listen to God. We listen to God. We come humbly to God to ask him, what is it that you want me to do, Lord? And we listen to our hearts. We deal with some of the heart issues, the anger, the greed, the jealousy that we have. But then we take all that and we say, Lord, what is it that you want us to do to bless our city, our family, our work, our community, what's happening around the world? What is it that you're calling me to do to continue to share and display, to take the power the Holy Spirit has and to be your witnesses and to give a hope 
in a hopeless world? What's your role in it? Let's journey together and ask those questions. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these people. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the words that Doc and Chris shared. Doc, a former professor and now engaging in the city. Chris, who was a former school teacher, then decided to do youth ministry and now is taking his skills to serve your city. All of us have a certain story. What is that story that you're writing for us, Father? What is that story that you're calling us to do based upon the power of the Holy Spirit? How do we make a difference in our lives? Thank you for the grace that you give us in Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's rise together and let's respond in worship and in prayer. song we could ever sing. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. It's worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you.
Lord, God, I just ask that you'd give us this boldness to take that step forward, God, to do the things that you're calling us to do, to love, God, our neighbor, to love the people around us, to love this, uh, this city, Father. God, we know that it might be hard. Actually, it's probably gonna be hard. Um, but God, you're, you're a big, powerful God. Your love, God, is so amazing. God, we believe it can invade the city and change everything. So God, use us. And God, just let your will be done. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Michelle, and I'm part of the Hosanna Fellowship, and I have a lot of announcements for you guys today. But because of time, I'm going to go through them. We're going to do pretty speedily. So we're going to do speed announcements for you guys today, my personal favorite. Um, and so we are excited that you are here to join us this Independence Day weekend. So happy July 4th. Stay safe out there. And if you are new to our church and are looking for more information, we'd love to get to know you and where you're from and what you do and kind of like how to welcome you and invite you and join us to our church family. So if you're new here, we would love for you to fill out this visitor connection form with the QR code and you may or may not get a free gift. Hint, hint, it's you will get a free gift if you fill out the form. Um, and uh, we're happy to kind of have you here today. And we have a cup. Because of July 4th, we are observing July 4th, so the church office is actually going to be closed tomorrow. So if you come, you may not be able to get in. And last week, we have we had an AMA, and there are updates on the bulletin. If you would like further information on what those updates are, please take a look at the bulletin on our website. And also, because of Vacation Bible Club, these last two weeks, this next week, we also have, it this week, um, we are not having prayer fellowship, but join us, not this week, but the following week, to um, get back to our regularly, regularly scheduled prayer time. We also have a couple of events coming up, so please save the date for the Congregational Picnic on August 20th at McCollum Park. More information will be provided as time comes along. And then a servant seminar on Saturday, August 27th. The community care team has been working on peace projects to address needs in the community and promote the sharing of the gospel. And if you're interested in doing any part of that and giving um, back to the church, we would love to have you join us on that day for that se seminar. We also have adult Bible fellowships right after service. So if you'd like to join us and get to know some um, fellow community members and church members in our uh, church, we would love for you to join us in our respective fellowships. And if you have any serving interests at, at all, if you've been part of this church for a little bit, um, you visited a couple times, and you're interested in maybe serving in a ministry, we'd love to have you join us. Um, and you could check out all the different roles at ccuc.com net slash serving in the, on the QR code and also on the bulletin. I just ran up from doing the stream. So if you've looked at the stream online before, um, that's an opportunity to do that. You just click a couple buttons. Um, and if you'd like to preside, be in my position, I'd welcome that too. It's kind of fun. And um, yeah, there are a lot of like either worship or whatnot, but we'd love to have you on our team and to join us in serving in this way on Sunday or any other way during the week. And finally, if you are wanting to give to our church, you can give online through the QR code, or if you'd like to give in person, we also have a um, giving box in the foyer. I'm going to invite Pastor Bob up to close us up for um, today. Thanks. All right, let me, let me, <laughs> it's just me. Uh, uh, thank you everybody uh, so much for being here. My name is Bob. I'm the pastor here of the English Congregation. I'd like to extend a very special welcome to you, especially if you are joining us here for the very first time. So glad you could be here. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to invite you to come back again to, uh, will you please help me uh, as well, uh, especially to thank and appreciate our, our guest speakers here uh, this morning, Tommy, Doc Feuder, and Chris Javier as well. 
Thank you guys so much, uh, Doc. So appreciate uh, you, you being here present. I love your heart for, for the city of Chicago, uh, for our church. Um, thank you so much for your partnership and what you do through your ministry. Um, it's our honor and privilege to be partnering with, with you and your organization and working alongside you. Thank you so much for your partnership and thank you for your prayers uh, for our church as well. I'm really excited to have Chris, uh, Chris and all the amazing things Chris does. Uh, in and through uh, the church and for the for community too. And Tommy, uh, man, thanks. Uh Thanks, Tommy, for all you do. I mean, uh, behind the scenes, especially Tommy, I mean, he lines up all these amazing speakers to come uh, and to feed us and to teach us God's word, um, to move us forward, you know. And uh, Tommy, thanks for filling in for me last week uh, when I was uh, healing, recovering from COVID. Um, I was so sorry I, I wouldn't have been, wasn't able to hear to hear uh, uh, Pastor Ford come and, and bring God's uh, word. Man, that was an amazing word uh, last week. I was uh, catching it online too. Um, you know, uh, as we wrap up here uh, today, I'm just reminded um, and pressed to be able to share with you guys um, that not only, I mean, our community needs prayer. Uh, we need to be praying. Uh, as we just uh, heard and, and some of you guys heard uh, just this past Friday night, someone once again was shot and killed. Right at, the, right, right at the gate. I want Worth and Cermak here. Another life lost. Another victim of, of gun violence here in our city, here in Chinatown. We need to be, continue to be praying for our community big time. But my hope and prayer is that we would also be someone's answer to prayer. You know, as we've been challenged and inspired and encouraged uh, through God's word, through his servants here today, I hope and pray that, that you know that here at CCUC, we want to be answered to your prayer. That I really believe wholeheartedly God has wired each and every one of us, created and called each and every one of us to be impactors and influencers in this world that we are be, be called to be manifestors of God's presence, uh, to make God even known more, to be hope in this world for Christ and, and his glory. And if that's you, if that's your heart prayer, welcome to church. I'm so glad you are here today. Uh, I want to issue out, I mean, help wanted. How wanted and needed. Even what, what Michelle was just kind of sharing uh, briefly. I mean, Michelle's doing triple, double duty here today. I mean, coming here to do, to doing presiding and sharing announcements that she's running back and forth uh, to go work, work everything out the internet. We need help. Uh, not just to run church as usual, but to share and show the love of Jesus Christ in this community. Because people need the Lord. And I know in my heart of hearts that that's what's in your heart of hearts too, that you want to make a difference in this world. That all true Christ followers, we have it in our hearts that we want to make a difference for Jesus Christ. And I want to inspire and encourage you that this is your place. We're your people that can help you make that happen. And you could join forces with us because we want to make a difference in this world for Jesus Christ and lift his name up on high. That at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Towards that end, let's close our time in prayer. Let's pray. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you and praise you, Lord. Yes, what again, Lord, for this opportunity and privilege, God, that you give us uh, to be a part of your community, to be a part of your church, to be blessed, Lord, and privileged in this uh, great position here in Chinatown, Lord, to be ambassadors, to be salt and light, Lord, to be sharers and showers uh, of the love of Jesus Christ, Lord. There's people that are hurting out there. And, Lord, we ask, God, that you would break our hearts for uh, the whatever is breaking your heart. 
Lord, yet again, another family, another uh, another life that you created has been extinguished here in Chinatown. And Lord, we ask for healing. We ask for grace and mercy, Lord, that you would even use this, this horrible tragedy, Lord, use it for your kingdom good and for your purposes, that more would ultimately come to know and believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And Lord, not only do we want to just pray this prayer, but Lord, we want to be answers to that prayer as well. That through us, Lord, more will come to know and believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We, Lord, we thank you for the privilege that is ours, Lord, that you've imparted to each and every one of us gifts, talents, abilities, passions, Lord, to be influencers and impactors, Lord, in your world whether that be in our homes, whether it be in our workplaces, whether it be here in Chinatown, Chicago, in the States, Lord, and beyond in this world. Lord, you create that fire and that dream and the desire in each and every one of your children. And God, I pray, Lord, that your spirit will come upon each and every one of us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that your spirit will come, your Holy Spirit come and fill and anoint and empower. That as you do so, Holy Spirit, that we would be your instruments, your martyrs, your witnesses, Lord, in, Jerus in our Jerusalems, in our Judeas, in our Samarias, Lord, to the ends of the earth. Do this, Lord, not just for our sakes, but do this, Lord, for your namesake, for your glory, for your honor, Lord, that you would be magnified. Lord, that you would be loved and adored and worshiped, Lord. For to you and to you alone, Lord, belong all glory, power, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray all these things. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. God bless you. I'm going to ask you, please leave our sanctuary really quickly here because we've got to prep our sanctuary for our next service coming up quickly as well. So God bless you. Happy Fourth of July weekend, guys. Stay safe. God bless you.